The Guided Goals podcast gives you the tools, direction, and resources you need to pursue your passion project. I'm Deborah Eckerling, Project Catalyst, and this is the Guided Goals podcast. Our guest today is Robert Denton Bryant, and we're going to talk about writing video games. Robert has worked in Hollywood in both marketing and production, and in video games as both a publisher and a developer. And he is the author of Slay the Dragon, Write Great Video Games. Robert, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. It's it's real. I'm real excited to be here. Um, uh, part, one of the reasons we uh, we wrote the book, uh, Slay the Dragon, is that we wanted to, Keith, my co-author, and I wanted to reach writers and evangelize interactive media and, and video games to writers um, because uh, video games are uh, still relatively, in the course of human experience, a new medium. You know, video games are uh, 40 years old, and writing is thousands of years old, and uh, there's, a, there's, <laughs> there's a skill gap. Um, and what we're excited about is, is the reason we wrote the book is that we want to um, reach writers who are interested in interactive. And so what we wanted to do was sort of... Um, uh, say two things. First of all, we need you. We need your expertise with emotions and, and uh, character and, and world building and all like that. But secondly, it's not as hard as you might think getting into games. As I told you before, you know, I, I've got my website and community for writers right on online, and this is Guided Goals about the Passion Project. And this mm -hmm. topic certainly uh, crosses both because, I mean, People who are passionate about video games are so passionate about video games. It's insane. Why Why do you think that is? I mean, insane good. Yeah, insane good. Well, I think that, that because the nature of video games is that it's, it is a much more, it, it's probably the most immersive medium we have. I mean, short of like some, some 3D multimedia art installations like... Uh, uh, there's uh, uh, there's a new museum in downtown LA where you can walk into a room and it's raining on you. That's pretty immersive, okay? But that's the exception rather than the rule. If uh, you can lose yourself in books, of course, and in movies, but those are sort of finite in length and they're not interactive. Uh, people get really super passionate with uh, uh, with games the way they would any sort of um, activity where they're spending hours and hours and hours um, running around the world. Video games have become a mass medium thanks to Facebook and thanks to smartphones in the last 15 years. So the audience is so much broader. The stereotype is you think games, you think games in terms of like other world games, right? But they really are everywhere. But so even the games that people don't think of as games are mm -hmm. written. Well, I think that, I think that, you know, the interesting thing about players is they will create a world where no world exists. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you think of, of a little three in a row game, like Bejeweled, where you line up three mm -hmm. things row and, and, and collect points and, and like that, it's a very kind of a no brainer game in the sense that you're not involved with a narrative, but it's, it's very human. It's, it's natural human behavior to create narrative where there is no narrative. I may be dating myself by this reference, but if you remember Caddyshack, there's this wonderful scene in Caddyshack where Bill Murray as, uh, uh, uh Carl, the, the groundskeeper is, uh, weeding some flowers. He's got a weed whacker and he's weeding some flowers, but in his head, he's creating this narrative of uh, uh, this sports fantasy, Cinderella story here at Augusta, and he's doing this voiceover as though he were on ABC's Wild World of Sports, and they were narrating him whacking these weeds, each weed becoming a golf stroke, golf, a golf uh, uh, stroke in, in this televised tournament. And that's sort of what we do as people. If you've seen little kids playing with completely abstract objects, like plain geometric wooden blocks, they will turn those into a very story-rich environment very quickly. 
that's what we do. We make and stuff so, up. I'm sorry? We make stuff up. We do, we love to make stuff up where there isn't cool stuff already there. Right. Okay. Now, if you, you hand that same child a Lego, uh, my li uh, or, or a My Little Pony or a, a, a Lego uh, Batman playset, then they're in that world and they understand that they are in the rules of that world and they will play within that world. Um, so, you know, a lot of what we worry about when we talk about game writing is the world building. You know, what do you, what elements are you bringing so that the player can go in there and have a great time in your sort of theme park? You know, we, we, when we talk about world building, a lot of the metaphors we use are uh, theme park designing, or if that seems a little too intimidating, party planning, right? Because as you know, any good party needs three or four unique little activities going on uh, to make it really, really successful and have everybody feel like they had a good time. They're not going to have the same good time different people are going to be attracted to different things at your party, right? Mm -hmm. Some are going to hang out in the kitchen and watch you cook because they're like that. Others are going to hang out in the living room and, and do whatever you have going on in the living room. But the point is, is that they had a good time and you, you gave them choices, right? Games are about choice and games are about me as a player going into your world and sculpting or, or, curating my own experience based on what you've, you've uh, uh, laid out there. The thing that comes to mind is those, and now I am dating myself, those choose your own adventure books, right? Mm -hmm. So isn't that like the basis of a game is a choose your own adventure book or am I, I oversimplifying? Oh no, 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 not at all. The way that we sort of onboard writers into thinking about interactive is there's a really cool, uh, as we have them do, choose your own adventure, if you will, short stories. There's a great web-based web tool. It's free to try out. It's called Inkle Writer. And it's, uh, it's on the web. Uh, it, it allows you to start to create an interactive short story. So all you're doing is typing in, you know, it's very comfortable for writers. All you're doing is typing in text and designing choices. And all of the code that creates the hyperlinks to where here's choice A and choice B, and if I click there, it pops to what you want the result of that choice to be. All of that is done automatically beside, behind the scenes in this very powerful website. So all you have to do is focus on telling an interesting story, but also creating interesting choices for the player. And that's essentially, you know, the 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 crux of, of game design is giving the player interesting choices to do. Uh, there's a veteran, very successful game designer called Sid Meier, and he famously defines games, although it's not the only definition, but his definition of games are a series of interesting choices. And the, the thing about the choose your own adventure books back in the day is that there were very, very, very many choices. What made them good, what made them involving is that they were interesting choices where there were, there were, the, you had to balance, well, if I do this, then I risk losing that. Do you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, uh, one of the other exercises that I've had students do in my class, beginning writing students, is uh, for them to take a short story that they've already written and I'm very enthusiastic about this, this exercise. It's really cool. You take a story that you've already written, an existing short story, take that, bring it into Inkle Writer, and make it interactive somehow. And that really sort of expands your mind because it makes you realize, oh, all of a sudden, I'm no longer telling a linear story I'm having to create a space where choices matter. And I'm trying to create consequences for those choices that are interesting to the, um, uh, to the reader, uh, uh, you know, I almost said player, to the reader, to the interactive reader, right. but still make it true 
to the world and the tone and ultimately the point of the story I was going to make. You see what I'm saying? Uh, uh, the story I initially writing. So that's a fascinating exercise. It, uh, a lot of beginning writers find it very frustrating because it really is a paradigm shift for them. But uh, 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 it, 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 it's, it's a great first step to kind of expand your mind as to like what, what it's like writing for interactive because it's a very different type of writing. Is it I-N-K-L-E writer? Yeah, I-N-K-L-E writer. Okay, and I'll put the link in the show notes as well. I just wanted to make sure I had the right the right spelling on that. So let, let's go back to what you said earlier in the, the interview, which is it's an easy space to break into. It's easier than you think. Okay, um, we'll go with that. The, 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 the great thing, uh, one of the great stories that of the last 10, 15 years, in addition to there's millions and millions and millions more games players, is that the, uh, there's been sort of this democratization of game engines. And what do I mean by that? It means that you can download all kinds of, uh, or, or have access to all kinds of free tools that are available um, uh, online that allow you to create interactivity and begin creating a game without having to be an engineer, without having to be a programmer, and also without having to be an artist, okay? Because you can you can create interactivity with clip art, with found art, with you working in Microsoft Paint and putting something together um, uh, to represent what you want to have represent on the, in your game. So um, one of these tools, and we talk about them in the book, one of these tools, uh, the, the, the ver most basic one, and it was developed at MIT to get uh, uh, kids, you know, elementary school kids, uh, engaged in creating interactivity and creating games and then hopefully STEM, you know, uh, science math, is called, uh, that tool is called Scratch. And um, uh, that's a great entree to sort of, you know, on your computer for free without anyone looking, you can sort of, you know, create interactivity, you know, put a little game together and see what, and because you're a writer, you can start, you know, okay, here's my mechanics. What's the, what's the context am I going to put this in? You know, what's the story that's evolving from this interactivity? Um, there are also a little more polished, a little more um, uh, uh, complete, what I call game processors that are fun to use. One is called Game Salad which advertises itself as you can make a app without programming. Um, and game Salad is one and Game Maker is the other. And they work on both Windows and Mac and they're both free to try. And they both have very robust, easy to follow tutorials, and I, which I've done because I'm not myself an engineer. And uh, it's really amazing how you can start to get um, uh, uh, put together a little game by yourself um, and begin to author in an interactive medium, you see what I mean? So that's what I mean by it's easy, There, it's much easier now to the, start creating interactivity than, than it was. Yeah, so the barrier, it's sort of like even with videos, videos used to be a big deal now you know like the same game machine this you have in your pocket this is a high res video camera this is a really good video camera yeah 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 okay so in people so they they start playing with the the inkle writer and the different apps and i'll i'll put links to all of them in the mm -hmm. the show notes so i've done that or the the game Game writer has done all that. So what's the next step? Do they create their own or do they take these skills to try and get hired by a bigger fish? Well, I think, I think if you have a passion project, mm -hmm. your answer is A yes. and do your own, right? Right. Um, uh, uh, but you can, you know, you can, uh, the, there is a great entry level job 
uh, to look out for. And the words you need to search on, on is content designer. Okay. Okay. Uh, you like that? <laughs> uh, by the way, game writers in a lot of game studios are called narrative designers. You That's like that term? Awesome. That interesting. Um, you know, a, a, but it actually means something. It's not just jargon because it means a writer who understands game mechanics and understands how to work with game design in order to enhance the gameplay. You know, one of the one of the most uh, humbling things about working in the games field as a writer is that you don't come first. In movies, it begins with a script. That, that without a script, there is no deal, right? There's no director, there's no storyboards, there's no actors, blah, blah. You have to have the script first. That's not true with video games. With video games, it's the mechanic. It's what am I doing on screen? What's, what's fun, okay? And good games bring writers in very, very early to help build the world, to help, you know, provide a narrative context for that activity. But they aren't the first uh, creator involved. So that's very humbling for, for writers to, to get to understand. But once they do understand what they can bring to the table, um, and once they have worked with some of these tools or with uh, like map editors or level editors or, or in, in their favorite games, um, then you can start to apply for a job like a, a, a content designer, which is essentially like a quest, a quest writer, right? Mm -hmm. um, big role-playing games like a Fallout or Skyrim or uh, um, uh, uh, The Witcher 3 are these vast, vast, vast games that have a uh, just an in, almost inexhaustible need for lots and lots and lots of content. And so if you can demonstrate that you understand how those games work and can create quests, which are little short episodes, if you will, for the player to player's character to engage in and go do things, um, that's a, <clears throat> a getting to be more and more common entry level position. And, uh, Sometimes you're in the studio working with people. Very often, sometimes it's done freelance uh, online. So, so uh, uh, yeah, but, but what you can't do as a writer is start taking yourself, uh, start applying for jobs as a game writer without playing games and understanding games, it's specifically in the genre that you want to work in. And I think with that, you just answered the question I was going to ask, which is what mistakes people make. And I would imagine it would be not doing that. Yeah, you can't. <laughs> and, and, you know, this book came out of Keith's and my class, which was in the writer's program at UCLA Extension for years. And uh, we had a lot of students who would come in as established screenwriters would be like, yeah, Hollywood, it's all hard. I hear there's money in games, so I want to do that. Um, and we're like, awesome, great. We need your skills. We need your storytelling skills. But you have to invest the time to learn the medium. Okay, um, it's a different medium. It is uh, the 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 story of the, you know how the book came about, how Keith and I teamed up, sort of enca encapsulates that. Because even though I had worked in Hollywood and I knew screenwriting and I knew story structure, I'd been working in games for about ten years when I hired Keith as a veteran screenwriter to help me write a game. And he came to it as a storyteller. Oh, three act structure and character arcs and and you know big twist on page sixty and all like that. And I'm like, yeah, you can't do that. Yeah, it's different. Um, and so we came up with this great paradigm that became the sort of, you know, kind of our theme for the class and the book. Um, and that's Aristotle, linear storytelling versus Mario. I want to play a game, right? And it's that tension that makes game writing so uh, at once challenging but rewarding when you get it right. It takes a while to get your head wrapped around, but once you're comfortable playing games, as you've played 
certain types of games, you understand how story is handled there, how you think you might be able to do it better, how you might be able to tell a better story through that gameplay, then, you know, the world's your oyster. Wonderful. Oh, this is this is really fun, exciting stuff. I'm so excited to, to have you um, here to talk about it. I, I do want to, before we wrap, ask you about work-life balance because you, like our listeners, do a lot of different things. So what do you do or do you advise so people could have a little better balance in their life? For anybody who works in software, but it's certainly true of writers, whether they're interactive or regular, is get up out of the computer Go look at things. Just walk outside your house and look at things. That's it, a bush, a tree, okay? A piece of, you know, red solo cup being blown by the wind down the street. Whatever it is, you know, get out of your own head. Go, go exist in what we call meat space as opposed to the online space. Um, and that will really help and refresh you and, and you're good for another three or four hour coding or writing or arting or whatever it is you do, Jack. Which is a great personal goal of the week, which is step away from the computer, go outside and look at things. Look I, at things. Look at things. And you can even, if you feel better, make a list and incorporate it into a game later so you feel like your downtime helped you get inspired, right? Um, and then the, I guess the bonus personal goal would be to play a game. And then the professional goal would be to go to that Inkle Writer website and write one. Just mm -hmm. have a little bit of fun, play with it, and see what happens. Anything to add? No, no, no. I think those are great. I, I think that, that, you know, especially think about um, – uh, if you have a short story or, uh, you know, even a, even a micro story, even a, uh, uh, something you did based on a writing prompt that's really short, you know, um, uh, try bringing it into to Inkle Writer and seeing how the addition of choices makes it change into something different that's still recognizably yours. And guess what? You're already writing interactive. Wonderful. Okay, so there are two choices. You can start one from scratch or even better, take an existing story and see how uh, gamifying it, turning it into a game, giving alternatives, giving good choices sure. changes your story while keeping it your story, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Well, wonderful. Well, thanks again, Robert Denton Bryant, uh, co-author of Slay the Dragon, writing great video games for joining us today on the Guide to Goals podcast. And you can go to guidedgoals.com to get the show notes and links and watch the video or listen to the audio. So you can just uh, fulfill your dream of being a video game writer because it's so attainable. And so go on out there and go for it.